Hey folks, turns out the year is not over yet, and there are two more interesting papers that we need to talk about. And so yeah, so let's let's get started. Welcome to the series on uh, just paper overviews. Um, again, as a as a pretext, um, I'll just give a uh, one, two, three, few minute overview of the papers. If you want to learn more, read the papers or check out other videos that go in depth. My goal is to just give a very high over overview of the papers. And so that you can decide if it's interesting or not for you. So um, this paper, No More Add-on, is about a new way of uh, scaling um, optimizers or a new kind of optimizer that does not, that gives good performance and uses less parameters. So what's the problem? The problem with Adam and all these fancy optimizers is that they take a lot of your compute memory so for example, here, if you see uh, model size, and if I look at a 7 billion parameter model, um, Adam um, would, or Adam W, takes 24 gigabytes of memory. Adam Mini, on the other hand, because it has a lot of averaging, um, it takes two gigabytes. And so, so here, they, these folks describe a new way or a new kind of an optimizer that does not take a lot of parameters and yet performs equally well. Um, so let's get to it. So um, they give a nice overview of like the, the different optimizers and that is what I want to get at. So your optimization or gradient descent is um, at a given step T. The next step is given by um, the parameters and then the gradients in that direction or you know the steps in that direction. So in a standard gradient descent, this is just a derivative. So GT here refers to the derivative <clears throat> when you add momentum to it it is um, a fraction or a large fraction of the gradient plus um, the momentum from the previous step so where momentum is defined as um, so it's think of it like a moving average kind of thing because um, at every step you compute you take into account a fraction of the previous step and the current gradient at the step. Um, and that's what is your step that you put in this equation. So um, so yeah, so, so yeah, D of T here is um, just this MT. So that's what SGDM is. Now in the adaptive setting, um, the first order of momentum is also taken into account or first order, uh, and the second order uh, moments also. So, so what I mean here is um, you compute this V of T, which is the second order momentum, um, which is given by, you know, the value at the previous step, a fraction of it, and the squared, the second moment, the squared of your gradients. Now, um, so this, this function VT, um, so when, when we compute our, our step, our step is the same as SGDM um, with the momentum and all, and it is scaled by this alpha T. So with this alpha t contains um, this um, um, this one over square root vt. Oh, sorry, I should have slowed down. But this one over square root of vt. And the idea is that um, so in momentum, you know, if you're ma maintaining momentum, you don't get stuck in local minima, and it allows SGD to move consistently in the direction, leading to faster convergence and whatnot. Um, now with, um, so here you just, so the idea of adaptive gradient is that um, this is scaled according to the, the, the combined square of gradients that you're tracking across your learning plates. So, so this is more optimum because you're taking like, um, you're going in the same direction, but you are, you are noise resistant because of this uh, normalization. Um, now, so, so this is good. But then the problem is, as, as we go from regular gradient descent to these fancy methods, now we need to track, keep track of additional parameters. So, um, the, so as I was saying, these additional parameters um, come at a cost, right? So um, I remember there was a part of this paper that talked about, you know, um, uh, how much extra memory are uh, these these things occupy or the optimizer states occupy. So here 
yeah, if you look at this, so for a 7 million parameter model, Atom requires 50 gigabytes of memory. Uh, and that's, you know, you know, we're not even talking about uh, activation states and, um, and so on, temporary memory and so on. So here, um, after that, there have been like some interesting versions of Atom, uh, which are used to save memory. So um, one idea is that instead of this moving alpha t, which is, you know, captured for each parameter, if we compute averages, so for example, for a block of parameters or for a layer or what have you, you can have like one parameter for that. Instead of having alpha t for each of your parameters, you can have for a group of them, you can have just one alpha t. And that's what Adam Mini is. And let's see if I can find it. Yeah, so basically it partitions the block and uses a moving average for the estimate of vt for each block. So, so in a way you are uh, fixing alpha t is constant for the entire block and that's what however like all these things come at the cost of um so first there's a complexity here because you have to compute these averages uh so there's a compute cost and also um uh, all the trade-off comes at the cost of reduced performance so in this paper they propose a more memory efficient uh technique that is not resistant to this um uh, which is a reduces uh, uses less parameters and also b uh, the performance is good or at least that's what they say so basically what they say is we will compute the norms um, so the norm is computed like this using the gradients and the variance um, for um, for a given block and uh, so again it is at the block level but um, so the, this is how the norm and variance is computed. So there is no extra compute being done, right? Just just you work with the gradients. Um, well, that is an extra compute, but it is not so costly. And um, what they do is you just compute the uh, factor by um, dividing norm with the square root of variance. So this this quantity becomes our, um, you can say that this dimensionless quantity is our multiplication factor. An addition step they do is for like, we normalize it according to the maximum of the block. So, so this, you get this, um, this factor for each block and you will um, divide it by the maximum value that a block has to, to give, to get some kind of like a uh, normalized score normalized by the maximum value among them and that's it so this this tilde thing becomes the uh the factor that you multiply and because of this your memory overhead goes from um number of parameters like as a function of my number of parameters to just um function of the block sizes um so in a way that's similar to adam mini but um the way adam mini does it is is a bit different compared to here where the block sizes are the what the blocks are it's a bit different i, I won't go into details uh, because that gets into a particular network type here they use vit but um basically they show hey you know good results across the board um so on and so forth um good stuff so you know um something to a technique to just like take a look at uh you know time will tell like it's been a while we've been using Adam W, so like any new optimizer needs to showcase good results across the board. Uh, so time will tell how this method does, but you know, so far so good. Um, the other paper is an interesting one. So um, this is a modern rendition of BERT, which they call modern BERT. Um, so sorry, modern BERT. Um, so this is BERT for the new age, like. There are all these decoder-only fancy models are there. Like after 2018 or 2019, there hasn't been a, a large-scale encoder-only model, and and this is for good reason because it's like really challenging to train encoder-only models because their loss is just MLM loss, which which is not very efficient compared to the CLM loss, where you can train an entire batch worth of content with just one data sample. Um, but really. In industry, the workhorse is BERT. 
like no one is using like you know for embeddings for sentence embedding and so on for retrieval for rags parts are still being used no one is using like decoder only model models for that people are but um bird is still the gold standard so if you see i don't know some some model download repositories you'll see like bird and sentence bird being the uh, top most downloaded models still still uh, so so basically the authors sorry about this the, the authors of this paper um you know create a new bird basically and and they do is like they do all the fancy tricks they basically um use the rope position embeddings uh rotary ones they have a uh, uh, normalization blocks um uh, pre-normalization and they also adopt gated uh GLU or gated glu based networks just like llama models so basically train all these architectural improvements or they took all the architectural improvements of the decoder style models of the llama models and so on and then used them into the basic bird architecture the the additional thing that they do is they have an alternating attention where um, each layer alternates with so the global attention alternates with the local attention so in one layer you will have on square attention and in the next layer you will have like a sliding window like local attention and that's what they, they keep alternating so that's one thing they do um what else uh, of course flash attention torch compiled but these are like just implementational details um yeah so, some bits about they, they optimize it for their training hardware standard stuff um now of course the data mixture is new they they train on two trillion tokens and they build their own tokenizer which is kind of based on the olmo paper uh, for those i have a series on how the olmo models were pre-trained so please check that out um and of course they do mlm loss they have um, stable adam w optimizer and so on um and it does pretty good so i guess now if you want to use another you know uh, so they've designed it as a drop and replacement for bird so uh, so if you just replace your bird with modern bird um, in your auto model for causal lm or auto model for classification whatever um you will get this mod this this new and improved model so which i highly recommend trying out and of course you know it performs well on all the tasks um an interesting thing here is um let me see the let me show you the appendix uh i i really like this table because they showcase you know the different phases of training in the pre-training phase how many tokens were used what was the batch size micro batch size what is the learning rate and so on uh so so this is very interesting i like these kind of tables um i don't know if people showcase them anymore but but this is interesting that they trained it on a single instance like this is an 8x h100 so this is like a p5 instance uh so so what they're saying is you can train a pretty you know decently large language model um on just one instance so that's pretty good um yeah so that's that's pretty much all i want all of what i wanted to talk about and um yeah thanks for watching